Ya tagia tan ankabani min diganika. Oh, tyrant spare me of your tyranny. He created then exiled man without his consent and will, so there would be no justification for punishing him, by thrusting him into the torture chamber, prepared for the purpose, and then failing him per his schematic. By the way, where the sin is a consequence of free will, Plotinus, it is also, per Islamic dictum, committed out of ignorance, thus, man cannot be held responsible for an act done, in ignorance, without will, intention to sin, hence, stands absolved of any arbitrary punishment. Greater than free will versus predestination? Maneuvering, schematic God. To digest slash swallow God's creational imperative or the paradox, man ought to have a frame of mind of subservience and, obviously, by default, doing his bidding. Else, per his schematic, will be caught in the dragnet of disbelief and counted a transgressor. Per his schematic a few men are designated to initiate, spread and implement his message under his watch and authority, prophets come rulers and fewer among their followers are assigned to spread, justify, issue fatawa, defend and elaborate the message disseminated by the above. Companions, followed by scholars. Most followers slash believers are granted the subservient frame of mind with a lesser role of defending and spreading his message. Common believers, Sufis claim to have carved their own place, at the top echelon, of such assignments. Along with many traits and urges, man has been imbued with impulsiveness to justify his actions. Most religionists, theologians and adherents of dogmas, mythologies and faiths are busy justifying his actions in their distinctive or similar ways, regardless. A few, who defy this impulsiveness, are no match for the passion and textual support their counterparts have. They have nothing to support their arguments but inference and intransigence. The former draws his strength from the spiritual realm and its verdicts. The latter is clinging to the empirical and inferential domains, oblivious of the spiritual realm. Muslim apologists contend that God did not force slash burden man without making an offer of his trust, a manat, to mountains and the earth to bear the burden, which was declined by them, but the foolish and unjust man took it upon himself by accepting it. Surah Azab 72, 33. God seems to skirt foisting his will on man. He created man to worship him, Q, 5156, willingly with love and devotion, or unwillingly with awe and fear, else be ready to face the torment. These compelling threatening dictates were communicated to mankind by directing inanimate heaven and earth to come willingly or unwillingly. When they were still in a smoke-like state, Q, 4111, to overcome this, sense of foisting slash overbearing, Wilhaimin al-Kahir, he asked our souls, Am I not your Lord? and souls robotically responded in affirmation. He then cautioned, Now you have no right to say on Judgment Day, we were unaware of this. Meaning, you won't have any right slash claim on the day of accountability against the judgment meted out. His first absolution measure, then, according to apologists, theologians and scholars, he erased this contract of a lust, Q, 7-172 the very basis of accountability, from man's memory before thrusting him into the torture chamber of test and trial. It may not be said anything but trickery or while being civil, schematic. To obscure this heavy-handedness, his incessant pounding ever since has been that, he is Rahman, Rahim, forgiving, relenting, merciful, and just, Hadil. The above offer of trust was made to the non-human, inanimate entities, whereas the prostration to Adam was sought, of angels one but responsibility, was instead fixed on a bystander Satan, so were human beings encumbered to fit his schematic. There is no other way to explain it unless, apologists call it, his consummate wisdom or justify it by explaining the jargon of the Arabic language. It was an assignation slash imposition of responsibility, without any real slash factual option, shoved upon man and Satan. Man resorted to the apology, although accepted yet was exiled with an ostensible accolade of prophethood. Satan, on the other hand, stood his ground and accused God of misleading him, so he was accursed for life and expelled, actualizing his schematic. One angel creation is non-material, nor, without free will and for robotic obedience. Satan gene, like man, is created from material, energy and clay, endowed with intention and free will. Although constrained and subsisting in his will. Satan said, because you have put me in error, I will surely sit and wait for them, i.e., mankind, on your straight path, to mislead them. Q. 716. Satan said, My lord, because you have put me in error, I will surely make, 
disobedience, attractive to them, i.e., mankind, on earth, and I will mislead them all, Q. 1539. After creation, he inculcated man with awareness of his unicity and rules and regulations to adhere to. The first fully developed, homo sapien, rational man on the earth was Adam, a prophet, responsible for guiding his progenies to God's ways. After him, there had come over a hundred thousand prophets until the last prophet Muhammad to keep reminding men against deviation from his prescribed ways. His second absolution measure. Here, he, out of his sense of foisting slash overbearing, lures and pacifies man by granting him a bit of free will in religious and related matters. That subsist in his will, coaching and threatening, showing his concern for man, not to resort to transgression or commit suicide. It would ostensibly be antithetical but per his schematic. Worldly matters, however, were left to man's intellect operable within the causality paradigm. And with him are the keys of the Gieb, hidden. None knows them but he. And he knows whatever is there in the land and the sea, not a leaf falls, but he knows it. There is not a grain in the darkness of the earth nor anything fresh or dry but written in a clear record. Q. 659. Nothing happens without his will and knowledge, it otherwise, would negate his omnipotence and unicity. His rationale for inflicting people with ease and hardship, so that they may reflect and return to worshipping him seems petty and frivolous, as billions and trillions of other beings, according to his own declaration in the scriptures, are already busy exalting and extolling him. Maybe he is seeking a thrill or expansion of his choices through variety. Seven heavens and the earth and whatever is in between them exalt him. And there is not a thing, but it exalts, Allah, by his praise, but you do not understand their, way of, exalting. Indeed, he is ever forbearing and forgiving. Q. 1744. Moreover, some people will not cease exalting and extolling him in any situation, making his above rationale untenable. Such devout, as often observed, are quickly taken off the scene, for they are, ostensibly, antithetical slash challenging his schematic. Maybe a brief inspirational stint. The distinction is that foolish man, unlike other entities slash worshippers, adamantly keep doing his bidding, justifying his inflictions, by absolving him of his terror, fearing his punishment in the hereafter, and instead hoping for the promised paradise, which, the man should not have been touted in the first place. The omnipotent could have done it without test and trial and infliction. The apologists who defend him the best are so-called devout and wali of the highest echelon. It seems he has created the universes for his amusement or to keep him from boredom, of loneliness, which he vehemently denies. We have not created the heavens and the earth and all that is between them for our own amusement. Q. 4438. Nevertheless, to end his loneliness, he will grant immortality to man encompassing domineering God. He is Jabbar and Kahar, therefore, asserts that, he cannot be questioned, as to what he does, but they, the human beings, will be questioned. Q. 21-23, first snub unleashed was after the creation of Satan and the creation of man when the angels, were made to, question, raising a doubt, that man, like Satan beings, would create chaos and shed blood in the land, you don't know what I know. Behold, thy Lord said to the angels, I will create a vicegerent on earth. They said, Wilt thou place therein one who will make mischief therein and shed blood? Whilst we do celebrate thy praises and glorify thy holy, name? He said, I know what ye know not. Q. 230, a perpetual snub to all created beings. They angels, said, Glory be to you, we have no knowledge but what you have taught us. Verily, it is you the all-knower, the all-wise. Q. 232. A vivid display of angels' robotic character. Who created God? Some secular-minded people, seemingly driven by ignorance, phenomenality, empiricism, or causality, question, who created God? An apologetically logical and convincing answer would be that, suppose there was, in line with causality imperative, a super-super creator of the creator. Are, the questioners, equipped to recognize and grasp him, the super-super creator, since man does not even fully understand his own brain yet let alone billions, trillions of other things slash phenomena around him? Quran in Surah al responded to such questioners in terms of infinite regress, he begets not, nor was he begotten. Q. 112-3. Quran at this occasion, smartly, put in place such questioners by pointing out that, 
since there is no simile slash allegory of God, he cannot be conceived or conceptualized by a man, endowed with limited knowledge and faculties. You have only been allowed a little knowledge and limited capacities. Q. 1785, Quran also proscribes man from interpreting the reality of allegories used concerning his being and advises that he should take them as they are, for it is beyond his capacity to know their actual nature and meanings. Man being a material product is limited to the realm of space-time. So are his faculties, including his experiences and imagination. God, on the other hand, is beyond the confines of materiality and space-time, hence ungraspable and inconceivable. Quran further elaborates, those with deviant hearts embark on the allegorical verses seeking to spread doubt through their false interpretations, but none grasps their full meaning except God. As for those well grounded in knowledge, say, we believe in this Quran it is all from our Lord. But none will be mindful except people of reason. Q. 3-7. A demand for subservience. The, genuine, wisdom here for man is to embark on the fields of knowledge or phenomena, within his grasp, empiricism, and comprehension while shunning those beyond his capacity, including who created God. Moreover, as a convention, the creator of an object slash creation is not questioned. Sadist God Some seemingly arrogant daredevils also label him as a sadist god for there is rampant pain, suffering, and misery all around, as opposed to little happiness. Happiness is man's natural propensity, whereas pain and suffering aren't. He, anyhow, seems to enjoy inflicting people with pain and suffering under the rationale of inducing them to reflect and return to him. It is what forced Hindu priests to come up with samskara, reincarnation, doctrine, absolving God of injustice, justifying widespread disparity, pain, and suffering, by instead, blaming man's karma in his previous life. The fact of the matter is that, the creation of the world was not based on the principle of peace and justice but on pain and suffering. This fact has ever since eluded believers and non-believers, including Hindu priests. The accountability, and recompense, by far, are reserved for the hereafter. God, thrusted even his hand-picked prophets into the torture chamber of tests and trials. According to known scriptural records Jacob faced the harshest torture, Moses enjoyed the most leniencies, and most praises were lavished on Abraham. Muhammad, though lavishly praised, was ordained to follow the ways of Abraham. Jonah was punished for forty days in the belly of a fish. Abraham was accolade as, Khalil Allah. God's friend. Justice as, Kalam Allah. Word of God. Moses as, Kalim Allah. With whom, God spoke. Muhammad as, mercy for the worlds. Omnipotent, dominant, mighty God. He is omnipotent, dominant, mighty, al kahara Muhaimina al-Jabbar, therefore, asserts that, he cannot be questioned, as to what he does, while they, human beings, will be questioned. Q. 21-23, first snub was issued after the creation of Satan and the creation of man when the angels were, made, to raise a doubt that man being Satan-like would create chaos and shed blood in the land. The answer was, you don't know what I know. They, angels, said, glory be to you, we have no knowledge but what you have taught us. Verily, it is you the all-knower, the all-wise. Q. 232. Exhibits Angel's Robotic Character. Behold, thy Lord said to the angels, I will create a vicegerent on earth. They said, Wilt thou place therein one who will make mischief therein and shed blood? Whilst we celebrate thy praises and glorify thy holy name? He said, I know what ye know not. Q. 230. A perpetual snub to all created beings. He, omnipotent, dominant, mighty, Ayal Kahara Mohaimina Al Jabbar threatens, Do you then think that we had created you without purpose and that you would never return to us? Q. 23 115. And we created not the heaven and the earth and all that is between them without purpose. It is the consideration of those who disbelieve. Q. 38 27. Then he, clever tactician, changes his tactics, to carrot and stick, complaining and luring, yet there are some who take others as equals to Allah and love them as Allah alone ought to be loved, but those who, truly, believe, they love Allah more than all else. Q. 2-165 The Essence True faith requires that man's highest priority would be to seek God's good pleasure and hold nothing too dear to keep him from sacrificing it for God's sake. A subservient slave He used to destroy transgressors by avenging them through angels, 
on account of complaints lodged by his messengers, who were, rejected, denied, and ridiculed by their people. It gives a clue that most of them, known, if not all, failed in their missions. From the time of Muhammad, who was the most successful and changed the history of mankind, however, the revenge was at the hands of Muhammad and his companions, to make Muslims dominant, conquerors and rulers, over the non-believers and deniers too of his prophethood, proving to the world that Islam is the only acceptable, and chosen religion. Nothing, however, is done, for his claim, without it Imam Hujat, completion slash establishment of the proof slash evidence against transgressors. Two Jews and Christians, like all previous prophets and their followers, from Adam onward, were Muslims until they denied the prophethood of Muhammad and rejected Quran as the final revelation, thus were expelled from the folds of Islam. Upon delving deeper into the scriptures, it becomes evident that God has a human-like personality and psychology with traits such as wrath, happiness, complaining, threatening, jealousy, desires, seeking praise, be sought for forgiveness, liking, disliking, domineering, overbearing, compassionate, giving, and loving, etc. It may also be looked at from the opposite side, contending that he created man in his image, endowing him with traits like his. However, when a man behaves arbitrarily or overbearingly like him, he detests and despises him. Ahadith 1. The Prophet, said, Allah Most High says, Pride is my cloak and majesty my lower garment, and I shall throw him who view with me regarding one of them into hell. Sanan Abi Davud 4090 2. Allah, the Glorified, says, Pride is my cloak and greatness my robe, and whoever competes with me with regards to either of them, I shall throw him into hell. Sanan Ibn Majah, Volume 5, Book 37, Hadith 4174 Constrain God He claims to be omniscient, all-knowing, then, why inflict people with torture? Is it because he does not know the outcome, therefore, must experiment to find out and enrich his knowledge? In Quran he acknowledges this by saying, Had Allah known of any good in them he would have made them here but had he made them here, they would have turned away. Hers, Q, 823 This verse exudes a contradictory sense, of confessing to not knowing but then dismissing it by claiming to know the eventual outcome. Had it not been for a word that had gone forth before from your Lord, the matter would have been decided between them. Q. 11-110, this constraint and its admission show, God is subservient to his own decree slash word. And if your Lord had so willed, he could certainly have made human one ummah, but they will not cease to disagree. Q. 11-118, because either, he knows they will go against his will and do not want them to be pliant, or he is helpless for whatsoever reason. Such constraints are mentioned in Quran in several places. Such admissions, even at a mundane human level in a metaphorical sense, do not seem to behoove an all-encompassing, all-knowing, omnipotent God. Should the above assertions be assumed true would allude to God's experimentation and change of tactics, thus would abdicate him of the title omniscient, all-knowing God. The following concepts are not directly related to the above discussion, but in the context of creation become most relevant. Contrary to general belief, ex nihilo, nothingness, is non-entity. It is merely a conceptual construct to obviate human ignorance or add to his astonishment. Because, the way God has been described in various scriptures and conceived in traditions is all-encompassing, which does not leave room for anything besides him, even nothingness or ex nihilo. Otherwise, ex nihilo would have been coexistent with him, this is why, he first created, smoke-like, matter out of his will, then created man, in his image, and the universe out of the matter. The concept of creation out of ex nihilo is a farce. A hadith describes the first matter created as, alama, something like smog or dust cloud out of which creation is said to have ensued. Quran explains it as, the originator of the heavens and the earth when decrees a matter, he only says to it, be, and it is. 2-117. I, therefore, contend that the creation started of matter created by his will and not out of ex nihilo. Quranic word says to it clearly indicate he is addressing something existent. If ex nihilo or nothingness is perceived existent before the creation of matter, it had to have coexisted with God, which would be antithetical to monotheism. Similarly, the concept of infiniteness, forces man to realize his own finiteness, which is but inevitable for the recognition of his existence. I would dare contend that God ought to have some outlines or limits to exist and be cognizable. These limits, 
however, may or may not be conceivable and encompassable by his, ostensibly, created material universe. Surah Alaklas alludes to these existential limits by declaring him Ahad and Samad, one and self-sufficient necessary being. One is just the beginning of a lot more, which may be his creations, and nothing before, zero, which he refutes in terms of infinite regress, which logically makes sense. Where it makes him a necessary being so, becomes his creation. Hadith Qudsi. A desirous God. I was a hidden treasure, I love to be known, so I created the creation to be known. From the 5th slash 12th century onward, this tradition has occurred in many Sufi texts, and the great Sufi masters like Ibn al-Arabi and Rumi have made extensive use of it to build their mystical philosophies. It also answers the perennial question why? Since he is beyond human imaginative or perceptual construction, he can safely be delineated slash assumed as a consciousness, that is, formless, non-material, non-composite singularity with a will and characteristics emanating from his being Zat. Conclusion He is either, not all-knowing or not omnipotent. According to human logic, intellect, and rationality, both of his characteristics cannot go hand in hand. If he is all-knowing, creator should not have to test his creation to find something about it. If he is omnipotent would have created humans like angels, without forcing his creation to test and trial. The plausibility, therefore, is that he is doing it, either for his pastime slash amusement which, he vehemently denies, or he is not omniscient, and is experimenting to select the desired ones to grant immortality slash eternity. Absolution Clause Writing this treatise, I have neither embarked on a war against God, nor am I trying to prove that I am a thinking novelty. I also do not intend to foist my views on others. For all purposes and intent, I am a practicing Muslim. These outpourings are simply the intellection of my rowdy self. Readers have every right to commend, agree, disagree, reject, or criticize within the boundaries of civility. I am, however, neither apologetic nor harboring feelings of guilt or shame by putting these out. Comment slash like slash share slash follow and subscribe. Shakir Mumtaz Author, Thinker, Analyst